Okay, so welcome to this first video in the playlist on angiogenesis. In this video, what we're going to discuss is angiogenesis. Okay, so we're going to discuss it very basically. So we're not going to um, go into in-depth looks at the downstream pathways of the vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2. What we're going to do is look at the bigger picture, basically. Uh, it's going to be a nice overview of the angiogenesis process. Okay, so the structure for this video then. Firstly, we're going to define what angiogenesis is, and we're going to contrast it to another term, which is vascular uh, gen genesis. Okay, uh, so we're going to see what is the difference between angiogenesis and vasculogenesis. Okay, then what we'll do is we'll talk about the two different types of angiogenesis, namely sprouting angiogenesis and also uh, intersusceptive uh, angiogenesis. And then we'll discuss discuss both types basically. We'll give an overview of sprouting angiogenesis about which more is known and then we'll look at intersusceptive angiogenesis. Right, so firstly let's define what angiogenesis is and contrast it to another term which is vasculogenesis. Okay, so angiogenesis means the creation of blood vessels from existing blood vessels. Okay, so angiogenesis, creation of new blood vessels, and it's generally from other capillaries, basically. It's the creation of capillaries from other capillaries. But you can also create new arteries and veins. Okay, so creation of new blood vessels... Okay, so angio means pertaining to blood vessels, basically. Genesis means creation. Okay, so creation of new blood vessels, but specifically it's creation of new blood vessels from existing blood vessels. Whereas vasculogenesis, again, vasculo means pertaining to the vascular system. Genesis means creation. So this means creation of blood vessels, and this time it is just the creation of blood vessels. So you don't have to be creating them from new blood vessels. Okay, so from existing blood vessels. So that is the difference uh, between vascular genesis and angiogenesis. So they are very different things. Vascular genesis is something that occurs in embryology, basically. So when you are an embryo, when you're in utero, uh, you are creating uh, blood vessels. Okay, so we're going to just briefly talk about vascular genesis, uh, and then we'll move on to the main topic of this video, which is angiogenesis. Okay, so basically, where do blood vessels come from in the embryo? Well, basically, they're mesodermal in origin. Okay, so remember, there's three layers in the trilaminar germ disc. There's the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. Okay, so they're of mesodermal origin. So... From mesoderm, what happens is a few mesoderm cells differentiate into a type of cell known as a heme angioblast. Okay, so you create special types of cell known as heme angioblasts. Okay, and these heme angioblasts will be the origin of both uh, the endothelial cells that form the vasculature and also um, the, hematopoie sorry, the hematopoietic stem cells, uh, which create the hematopoietic cells, so red blood cells, white blood cells, the cells which create all the blood cells that are in the blood, basically. Okay, so heme angioblasts can then go two different ways then. Okay, so they can uh, differentiate either into a type of cell known as an angioblast, okay, or they can differentiate into a type of cell known as a hematopoietic stem cell. Okay, and for short, hematopoietic stem cells are often denoted as HSC um, cells, so hematopoietic stem cells. Okay, so, or... These are often just abbreviated to HSCs, hematopoietic stem cells. Right, okay, so uh, the hematopoietic stem cells are then responsible for producing the cells of the blood. So these produce the hematopoietic cells. 
whilst uh, the angioblasts are responsible for producing the endothelial cells that will actually create the blood vessels. So these will differentiate into endothelial cells, basically, and they will start to um, produce blood vessels, basically. Okay, so vascular genesis is uh, the name given to the actual production of blood vessels de novo within the embryo. Okay, so we're turning our attention away from that now, and we're going to focus our attention now on angiogenesis, which is a process that actually occurs in the adult body, okay? And this is the creation of new blood vessels. Okay, so basically there are two types of angiogenesis. There is sprouting angiogenesis and there is intersusceptive angiogenesis. Now, sprouting angiogenesis is probably, if you've got a picture in your mind of what angiogenesis is, it'll be sprouting angiogenesis. This is the more famous one. We've known about this for now 200 years. Okay, so well, more is known about sprouting angiogenesis than is known about intersusceptive angiogenesis, but both processes are not brilliantly understood. Okay, uh, the other type is known as intersusceptive Okay, and this is a difficult word to spell, intersusceptive, uh, which is also called splitting angiogenesis, and splitting is probably a better name for it than intersusceptive. Okay, and we've known about this since 1986, so this was discovered in 1986. Right, so what I'm now going to do is discuss both types of angiogenesis. I'm going to give an overview of sprouting angiogenesis and also intersusceptive angiogenesis. Okay, so we'll start off with sprouting angiogenesis then. So this one that I'm now underlining in turquoise. So, basically, let's say that we have some tissue, okay? So maybe there's a cell down here, and let's say this cell is hypoxic. Okay, so sprouting angiogenesis and also intersusceptive angiogenesis, they're both triggered by hypoxic tissue, okay? Uh, so it's called hypoxia-induced angiogenesis. There are other places where it can occur, but uh, we're going to look at mainly hypoxia-induced uh, angiogenesis. Uh, but, you know, it could be a different form of angiogenesis, so we'll call this an angiogenic centre to be more uh, general. Okay, but you could think of this as being a hypoxic cell, basically. So this is an angiogenic centre. Okay, so potentially it's a hypoxic cell, or potentially it could be at a site where you've had a wound, maybe, because you get angiogenesis there. And what happens is other cells that infiltrate at the site of the wound, such as macrophages, they start releasing uh, the pro-angiogenic molecules, which we'll see in a moment. So an angiogenic centre is just anything which is going to release pro-angiogenic molecules, okay? And maybe it could be a parenchymal cell, which is hypoxic, okay? Or maybe it could be some macrophage at the site of a wound, okay? Right, so it's going to start releasing pro-angiogenic molecules. Now, what are pro-angiogenic molecules? Well, the main pro-angiogenic molecule is something known as VEGF, and then specifically VEGFA. Okay, so this angiogenic centre will be giving out this VEGFA. Now, what does VEGFA stand for? Well, it stands for vascular that's the V, and then E is endothelial, uh, and then the GF is for growth factor. So this is the vascular endothelial growth factor, and then it's type A vascular endothelial growth factor. So there are other vascular endothelial growth factors, but vascular endothelial growth factor A is easily the most important. So, the angiogenic centre contains these cells which, for some reason, are secreting this pro-angiogenic molecule, vascular endothelial growth factor A. And it could be, as I say, some cell that is just hypoxic, that's part of the tissue. Uh, the fancy word for a cell that's just part of a tissue is a parenchymal cell. Or it could be that this is the site of a wound, and then some of the immune cells which have infiltrated that site, uh, such as macrophages, are now releasing the vascular endothelial growth factor uh, A to um, cause angiogenesis. 
Okay, okay, now, uh, let's draw some capillaries, okay? So we'll have one capillary up here, okay, like so. And capillaries, we should actually just have a discussion of the structure of a capillary. So we'll just do that down here. Let's have a discussion of the structure of a capillary. So basically, capillaries are tiny little blood vessels. They generally are one cell thick, basically, and a single endothelial cell can make up the entire circumference of the um, capillary. So here is this single endothelial cell which wraps itself around and is making up the entire uh, lining of the capillary. And this uh, endothelial cell will then be sat on a basement membrane, which I'll show in turquoise here. So turquoise represents the basement membrane, which consists of uh, extracellular matrix proteins, mainly collagen, but also proteins such as laminins, fibrillin, things like that. Okay, and then you also have other cells around this. So for instance, you'll have pericytes. Okay, so let's have this as a pericyte here, which is a type of contractile cell that lines uh, capillaries and venules. Okay, and both forms of angiogenesis that we're going to look at mainly affect capillaries. Certainly sprouting angiogenesis affects capillaries. Intersusceptive um, angiogenesis can actually work in uh, arteries and veins as well, uh, but we'll just focus on it occurring in capillaries. Okay, so here then is a pericyte. I'm going to risk trying to colour this in yellow, and it's smudged, I knew it would, never mind. Okay, and then another type of cell that you have sort of surrounding the capillary is fibroblasts. Okay, so in yellow, this is a pericyte. I should just label up the different bits here. This is the pericyte. In turquoise, this is the basement membrane here. Okay, and the basement membrane is often just abbreviated to BM for short. Uh, then we've got the endothelial cell which lines the lumen of the blood vessel, and one endothelial cell makes up the entire circumference of a capillary. And the lumen is within the end, well, it's this bit in here, inside of the endothelial cell, and it's about thick enough for a single red blood cell to fit through. That's why people say capillaries are one cell thick. Okay, and then this final type of cell here is what is secreting the extracellular matrix proteins. This, which I'll colour in blue, this is a fibroblast here. Okay, so this is a fibroblast. So those are the main cell types that you have involved in capillaries. Right, uh, so uh, I'm going to, for now, abandon the pericytes and the fibroblasts because in sprouting angiogenesis, the main players are the endothelial cells. So I'm just going to draw a few little endothelial cells here like so. So here's an endothelial cell, and I wish I'd drawn this a little bit bigger now, but never mind. Here's an endothelial cell, here's another endothelial cell, and of course we're looking at it in a different view from here. This is a cross-section. We're looking at it longitudinally now. Okay, so here are endothelial cells on this other lining now, like so. Okay, and there is our capillary, and we'll put the nuclei of the endothelial cells in here. Okay, so there's one of our capillaries, and I'll just put a turquoise line underneath to represent the basement membrane here, like so. Okay, and basically, sprouting angiogenesis is going to involve two capillaries, so I need to draw another one, and I'm going to put another one down here, basically. So down here, I'll put another capillary. So again, we'll draw the endothelial cells, and then we'll draw the basement membrane. So here are the end of, here's, well, here's one endothelial cell, here's another, and another, like so. Okay, and I'll give them nuclei, and then there'll be endothelial cells on this side too. Right, so we have these two capillaries, and basically, the reason I'm drawing two is that in sprouting angiogenesis, what's going to happen is both of them are going to give off little sprouts, basically. They're going to 
protrude out, basically. They're going to give little sprouts out that are going to migrate towards the angiogenic center, towards the place which is releasing the vascular endothelial growth factor A. And this is why it's important for me to draw two capillaries doing this, because they'll both produce sprouts, and then the sprouts will meet at the angiogenic center, and they'll fuse so that you'll get a connection between these two capillaries. So that's why I need to draw two capillaries, not just one. Okay, so here is a, another capillary completed now. Okay, so, so far we've got our angiogenic center, which is secreting vascular endothelial growth factor A, and we've got our two capillaries. What we now want to see is how is the vascular endothelial growth factor A going to affect the endothelial cells of these capillaries, but we'll see that in the next video.